I guess we can go into the Tokyo Dome first, or do you want to get into the news first? We'll get into we the got, news. But we we, we, could, we could talk about we we could, some we could, big we could, shows. We could talk about some of the stuff from the you know from the Osprey match, but um, yeah. So um, I mean, as far as the that's one of the best matches I've ever seen. Obviously, dude this this Will Osprey Kenny Omega match. Oh my God, I watched this match, and I had heard about this match. Because I watched the show through FTR last night, then I went to bed, and then I got up, and I was, I was in the building for AEW all day, as I'll talk about later. And so I came home, and I proceeded to watch the rest of the Tokyo Dome. And all day at AEW, everybody was talking about this Kenny Omega match, and how incredible this match was. So uh, when you have best, this one, one of the best matches of all time. When you have this built up in your head, well, now I got to go watch the match. All people have been saying is how great it was. Did I watch this match? And like, I when it was over, I just thought, who else could possibly ever do a match like this? Like, in terms of athleticism and the willingness to do absolutely crazy shit. And the storytelling, but the storytelling, the storytelling was the key. There's a lot of guys who can do crazy shit, and there's a lot of guys who can do flips. Dude, this was not doing shit and doing flips. Like yeah. everything they did was technically perfect and crisp, and at the right time. And like you know, the, well, the you- crowd's allowed to cheer now, but like. Every moment they would do some spot, and the people would scream at what spot they just did. And there was, you know, uh, Will Ospreay's just bleeding everywhere after getting dropped in the top turnbuckle. The one bad thing about the match, which I think he's okay. The impression I got is that he's okay, and I hope he's okay. But uh, they did the deal where uh, Omega got hung upside down in the ropes, and Will Ospreay does the super kick to the face. The Ch- Cheeky Nando's kick. Dude, he kicked him, and a couple of them look kind of stiff. And then the last one, he full out kicked Kenny Omega right in the face. And Kenny Omega grabs his face. And he, I mean, this was not just a, he grabbed his face. And then immediately, you start to see the thing coming up right here. And then you start to see his eyes start to swell up more and more. Dude, he got kicked so hard in the eyeball. Did you know that he had a, he had a footprint on his? Yeah. Because I his, saw a picture at the show of his face. Yeah, he had a footprint on his on his face basically um, later that night. Um, he's supposed to wrestle today in the um, uh, Dash show, which is in you know basically a couple hours. But um, I don't know if he's going to. But he was that was like a big secret. You know, it was supposed to be one because it's like it's a mystery vortex show, so you don't really know who's wrestling other than the four way. You know, for the um, King of Pro Wrestling title. But um, well, Kenny but won. Went, we should get that out of the way. He won the match with the one winged angel. You know, it's also another thing. Surprising and, uh, is it was it was never mentioned on the air tonight. No mention whatsoever, which I could no. not. Well, I don't know because I, I didn't hear the commentary. But yeah, no, well, not mentioned. Not I, I figured that they would do a package or something. Um, I mean, well, you know, build... they had a lot they had to do tonight. It was a it was a pretty busy show. It, well, it's always a busy show, but I think that you could kind of mention that uh, you know you know one of your guys won the U.S. title in one of the greatest matches. Well, in hey, listen, he can come out next week for the match wearing the belt or whatever. But it was one of <laughs> the best <laughs> matches I ever saw in my whole entire life. And I'm going to have to watch it again because maybe it was actually the best match I've ever seen in my whole entire life. It was unbelievable. I have had many people tell me there was the best match that they've ever seen. Good today. Lord. Yeah. Unbelievable. I would, not say, I would not say it was the best match I've ever seen, but I would certainly say it was uh, top five, top three, top, top five, I'd say. Easily, easily. I mean, it was the thing is, is that it, and, and it was both guys, you know, that that, um, you know, kind of like put it together. So it was like a conglomeration of, um, you know, you get two guys who are like absolute geniuses of putting matches together and then you put them together. Plus, it was, you know, a stage like Omega really wanted to go back. It really meant something to him to go back to the Tokyo Dome. And, you know, it was his first match in Japan in uh, in. Um, you could 40, tell for four years because watching it, that match, he was like five levels above what we've seen in AEW, and he has been awesome since coming back in AEW. Yeah, but, but this man, was... I watched this match and it was like, 
Who's this guy? Yeah. Well, Who is this guy? I know. He, I mean, from the, his the thing is, his star aura was so much stronger. Forget about the match. Just his whole star aura was so much stronger. I mean, one of the things that was, you know, I mean, he 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 made a mention that that um, Will Osprey might be better than him 364 days a year. But, and, and, you know, I mean, it's funny. I'm watching this match, and Will Ospreay has been in the ring, uh, the best wrestler of 2022 in the ring. I, and, I, I mean, there's, you know, he just has been. And this was his best match. He did not have a better match in 2022 than this match in 2023. And he probably had, you know, 10 of the maybe 15 best matches of the year this year. And I'm watching this. And I mean, the whole st- part of this is the storyline, you know, that they were doing, which is that, you know, Will's great. He's fantastic. And everyone thinks he's the best, but he's not. And I'm watching this match and like, you know, Will did incredible, incredible stuff, but just presence and everything. It was like when it was over, I mean, yeah, Kenny Omega won the match and it wouldn't have mattered if Will won the match, you know. Omega was like the he was just it, he was just incredible in this match just because he I don't say outperformed but he was clearly the star in the match I mean he was clearly the the you know he had the aura and he you know I, and I, again I mean it's probably some of the best selling Will Ospreay's ever done but whatever it was I mean it was just there's something there that was um it was really um it was really something, and uh, oh, here's here's one, and I I don't know if they told you this, but remember when Kenny was talking to us, year, you know, years ago after the match with Kota Ibushi, where the the one at Budokan, where he basically said that, you know, this was, I mean, it was it was one of the best matches of his career, but the whole thing was just like we couldn't give it all away. This is not the big match between us because they were waiting for a match in whether it would be Madison Square Garden or the Tokyo Dome, which they wanted the rematch to be. And they actually never did another one because, you know, Omega left and Ibushi, you know, they, they you know, in New Japan and, and AEW didn't have any relations for years and years. And then Ibushi got hurt when they finally did. So they've never had a chance to do the match again. And now who knows what's going to happen with Ibushi. Although Omega did wear an Ibushi t-shirt, um, in that in that match uh, in AEW just last week, so there's something going on, and he did use the Kamigoye, Goye, you know, set to set up the one wing angel for the finisher. So there's something, and they also in the uh, pre match, they also brought up um, like they never mentioned the name Kota Ibushi, but they talked about um, you know the match with Will Osprey. He just goes, you know, when you talked to me about the match with the guy, and it was. Uh, you know, um, I remember what you told me, and I'm going to do to you what I did to him. I'm going to cave your face, and this is what Osprey said. Because in that match, that was the match where I believe Osprey debuted the Hidden Blade and used it to. Um, he was supposed to give, Os- you know, um, Ibushi um, a concussion, but I think, you know, a, a work concussion, right? That was the storyline. But in the match, he actually did hurt him with one of the Cheeky Nando's kicks, actually, I believe it was. But he hurt, he, you know, Obushi actually did get hurt, and Omega, you know, probably talked to him about, like, you know, whatever he did. They had a discussion that night, which included talking about, since it was Omega's last night, it, it, you know, about carrying the company, but also about what happened with Kota Ibushi, who was obviously one of Omega's best friends. And they brought that up in the, in the interview, that press conference interview. Um, by the way, Will Ospreay did an incredible interview after the match, just so distraught, you know, about like, I'm going to give this one more year. And it's basically, there's so much going on with that, the story in that match. But um, where I'm getting, you know, he said, basically, I'm going to give this one more year. You know, it's almost like if I can't beat him in one year, I'm just going to get out of here. Um, but the point where I started all this is that this was the same thing. This was not their big match. This was the match to set up their big match. Well, good luck. They, they held back on Dude. a lot of what they could do. You know, it was very much like we have to do a lot of selling. Um, we cannot do a lot of moves because we have to save the moves for, you know, upcoming matches. And I don't know when they will be, but they were under the impression or they are, you know, certainly wanting matches 
you know, whether it's in the United States or back in Japan. And obviously, Omega's going to be going back to Japan. I mean, he was going to do Dash, and he's got the U.S. belt. So he'll be going back, and um, I don't know if he'll be doing the New Japan Strong show, I mean, the um, the U.S. shows. But, you know, I mean, obviously, with that belt, he'll probably be going back. I mean, I don't know how often. I mean, I, mean, I haven't heard him another date, but, you know, certainly like for, for Domi Dominion and maybe some other stuff. So um, he looked in... Uh, he looked in great shape, and um, yeah, I mean, um, it was it was just a absolutely uh, phenomenal match. But did you know that in January, WWE presents the Royal Rumble on the show will be what is being called a pitch black match? Why you ask? Well, Mountain Dew apparently has a drink called Mountain Dew Pitch Black. And they got a lot of money. If it's all blacked out and nothing happens, we're actually the winners because, you know, we don't have to actually watch it. Jared, put a black thing on the screen here. It's It would be like if the match was like this for 10 minutes, and all you heard was, oh, ow, boom. Oh. Oh. No, Mike, stop it. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.